So you think you might be infringing a patent. Well, how can you really tell? The patent system is a genius structure for preserving information and providing a system of rewards for inventors. But the Achilles heel of the patent system is that patents are difficult to read and difficult to understand. In this video, I wanna explore patent infringement and how to determine whether in fact a patent is infringed or not. Hi, my name is John Farrell. I'm a Silicon Valley patent attorney. Welcome back to my channel. Now this monopoly is only valuable to the extent that we can understand what the patent covers. So to start this discussion, let's talk about what's in a patent. Every patent has five parts. There's a title, there's an abstract, there's a set of figures, there's a detailed description, and there's a set of patent claims. When we're talking about infringing a patent, what we're talking about is infringing the claims at the end of the patent. You don't infringe figures, you don't infringe description, you don't infringe title, what you infringe are the patent claims located at the end of the patent. So to help us understand patent infringement, I think it would be useful to take a look at a sample patent. Let's take, for example, the 1886 patent on the Velocipede. This was an early bicycle patent. And to exercise this patent, let's say that we're in the bicycle business and we've just invented a new bicycle. Now, before we get too deep into this, I wanna hasten to add that the Velocipede patent expired more than a century ago. So it's not possible for us to infringe this patent now. But I wanna look at the terms of the patent, the claims of the patent, so that we can understand what those claims would look like right against the bicycle that we're building today. Now the Velocipede patent claim one has four basic elements. And I'm gonna summarize these just to keep it simple. But the elements are number one, there are two wheels arranged in tandem. And we can look to see what tandem means by checking the figures. Tandem signifies front to back. The second element of claim number one says that there's a rear wheel being no larger than the front wheel. Element number three of claim number one says that pedals are arranged between the two wheels. And finally, there's an endless chain connecting the rear wheel with the pedals. Now, if we look at our bicycle invention and compare this to the four elements of claim one, we can determine whether our bicycle is infringing the Velocipede patent. So element number one, we said there are two wheels in tandem. Our bicycle has two wheels in tandem, one in the front, one in the back. The second element of claim one of the Velocipede patent says that the rear wheel is no bigger than the front wheel. And it turns out in our bicycle, both wheels are the same size. So we're infringing that element of the claim as well. The third element states that their pedals are arranged between the wheels. That's the same as our bicycle. Our pedals are located between the front wheel and the rear wheel. And then finally, there's an endless chain connecting the rear wheel to the pedals. And that's true in our bicycle as well. So if this patent were still valid, we would be infringing the Velocipede patent with our new bicycle. Now let's say instead of manufacturing a bicycle, our company is gonna manufacture a tricycle instead. So this tricycle is a traditional tricycle for being a new invention. It has a front wheel and two rear wheels with pedals on the front wheel, a seat and some handlebars. So let's review this patent with respect to the Velocipede claims to see if our new tricycle would infringe claim one of the Velocipede patent. Now the Velocipede patent recites in claim one, a bicycle having two wheels arranged tandem as shown. First of all, our tricycle is not a bicycle as recited in the first element. And there are no two wheels arranged in tandem as shown in an alignment where one wheel is in front of the other wheel. We're not infringing element one. That is, we don't have two wheels in tandem as shown. Okay, the second element of the Velocipede patent recites a rear wheel no larger than the front wheel. So we probably do infringe this element. 
The third element recites, and provided with a pedal crank axle arranged between said wheels. Now, looking at our tricycle, our pedals are on the front wheel. They're not between the front wheel and the rear wheel. And then finally, and connected to the rear wheel, for driving by an endless chain and sprocket wheel, substantially as specified. Well, we don't have a chain, and we don't have a chain that drives the rear wheel. So the Velocipede patent has four distinct claim elements, and of these four claim elements, we only infringe one of them. That is a rear wheel no larger than the front wheel. But the other three elements, we don't use these. We don't practice these elements in our tricycle. And in order to avoid infringement, all you need to do is avoid the infringement or the use of one of the elements in the claim. Now it's important to understand that any of the claims at the back of a patent can be infringed. In this Velocipede patent, there are two claims. And I've only looked at one claim for purposes of this video, but we would also need to do a similar analysis on claim two. So a couple things to keep in mind. Only the claims can determine infringement. Not the title, not the specification, not the figures. You have to look at the claims. Secondly, every element of the claim must be contained or used in your product to infringe the claim. If you avoid any one of the elements, then the claim is not infringed. And finally, we must look at each of the claims independently at the, at the back of the patent to determine whether the patent as a whole is being infringed. Now I'm working on another video that talks about designing around a patent. That is, how much do we need to change our product in order to avoid a patent? And if you'd like to be notified of when this video is ready, then like this video, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell, and then YouTube will notify you when the next video is ready. And if you like this video, I think you'll find this next video useful as well. Thanks for watching.